Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing well, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Um, today's video is going to be a tip um, for writers, aspiring authors, um, novelists um, will definitely benefit from this. Anyone that tends to work on pieces that maybe are a bit larger um, in their writing, this is going to be very helpful for you. Um, what it is, it's going to be a technique to maybe help gauge how well your story as an overall piece is coming across. So not so much certain sections, certain chapters of your story, but more how just to see, you know, how the broader application of your story um, comes across to your audience. So all it requires basically is that you have a draft of your story done, ideally several drafts, most likely. Um, you don't want to go maybe too far in this process because it's going to be kind of disheartening. This might be a bit disheartening if you go several drafts in because you may have to restructure things. Um, but you have to have at least a couple drafts, at least a draft or two done. Uh, I, I think would be best if you're going to do this technique. So you have to have um, at least something completed um, to to a certain degree. And the other thing is you have to be part of a critique group. Um, this is gonna, this is basically something that's going to require other people. Yes, you can use beta readers, laymen. Um, but I do think you'll get the most out of this if it's other writers that are offering their feedback. Um, but here is the technique. It's very, very simple. Um, have your critique group write out a two to three paragraph blurb of your story. Um, that's it. That's it. So for one month, whenever, whenever it's your turn to go in your critique group, whether, whether you guys, if you guys go monthly, weekly, if you share, whatever, whenever it's your turn, ask your critique group after they have read your entire piece, um, to do a two to three paragraph blurb of your story. Um, this blurb basically is what you would see on the back cover, right? It's, it's the back cover of, um, of what you would see like on a book um, or what you would see like on, on an Amazon page on the description. Just an overall summary of, of the main plot and um, the characters and just an overall general concept, right? The reason for this um, is you will be very surprised to see what parts of your story tend to stick out with your readers. Um, I think authors tend to, what they do is they will tend to think that certain parts of their story tend to matter more than other parts. Um, and what they can do is they can kind of lose their overall message, their overall meaning, the overall objective of their, of their protagonist um, can be misunderstood. Their, their backstory and motivations can be slightly misunderstood. Um, it's very easy for these things that we think in our heads as the authors come across very clear to be a bit muddled, even with works that are very well written by very good um, writers. Sometimes it's not so clear. Um, and what kind of inspired this concept and this idea was uh, twofold. This, this, was, this was kind of an exercise that we used to do in my MFA program, but we would do it um, with about basically a, a one page summary of a, of a basically a short story that we all had to submit. So we would submit a short story um, for a critique in a critique group and basically everyone would have to do a one page summary of what, what worked for their story and what didn't work, things that were lacking, things that were working well, what have you. Um, so it's kind of that mixed with um, something that happened in my critique group recently. Um, I had a, a person in the group who is self-publishing their first novel. Um, and basically, they wanted to work on a, a blurb. They wanted to do a back, uh, back kind of blurb for their story. They didn't know how to do it, so they submitted one. Um, and we all basically kind of did rewrites of it and submitted our own to them um, just to give them an idea of, you know, basically how, how their blurb should look, may want to look. Um, and basically just offering our thoughts and opinions. But what came out of that and what I found was interesting was um, we tended, all three of us, we had the same general idea, but there were certain points that we were bringing up that we hadn't considered with the other person. So each, each of us basically would, would bring up a different motivating factor um, that was slightly different for the narrator. It, same idea, but there's slight variations there, um, slight variations of the goal of this protagonist in the story. Um, admittedly, the story, it does, they're, they're a wonderful writer, but the, the motivations are a bit muddled at certain points in this tale, um, which is why there's a bit of discrepancy amongst us. Um, it's something I've pointed out several times, this person, um, I won't go any more than that. But that's kind of the genesis of this idea, of this technique I'm, I'm sharing here, is that you would be surprised how different people perceive your tale and understand the key points of your tale. And so if you are someone who's a couple drafts in and you want to make sure there's a good cohesion on what your story is, if you want to see what other people think of your, of your tale at this point and what, what they've come to understand about it, 
try this technique. And if you find that you're not getting consistency with, with what you want from these, from these readers, it's a good indication you need to go back and make things more clear. Um, it's a good indication you need to go back and make, um, make some alterations to your, to your story there and fix some of these, these key points. Um, if, again, if the motivations are misunderstood, if the objectives are misunderstood, if, um, certain, maybe, maybe someone includes maybe a subplot or two that stands out to them that for you, it's, it's a throwaway subplot that you don't think is that big of a deal. Um, just in that blurb, perhaps it's something maybe you should draw out more in another draft. It's, it's a good way to gauge how well people have perceived your work. And, um, if you're getting consistency one way or the other, and if you're getting a consistency where everybody is collectively thinking something else, where, you know, say, say you have a critique of four people, right? And so three of them offer the feedback to you and all are getting consistently incorrect information. They're consistent. All three of them think that your, your character's motivation is slightly different from what you believed it was going to be. It's a really good way to gauge um, that just as a, as a small example. And so give this technique a try, see it. Um, you, you would be, I think you'll be very surprised to see even no matter how clear your work has been, um, that there are definitely inconsistencies at certain points, um, with small things, uh, in your tale. Um, this is, this is, I mean, this story, for example, was done by an author who was pretty talented. Um, and they've been working on this for about, I think three, four years, something like that. So even that far into the process, they've still, um, kind of got some, um, some misunderstands about, about the, about the points of their story that they thought was the most important and that us readers took away as more important. Um, so try it out. Um, let me know how it works out for you. If you found this helpful, please give it a like um, and feel free to leave a comment in the comment section.